So medications that are used to treat pain can cause stomach irritation, uh, can cause stomach bleeding, lead to dizziness and fainting. Medications themselves can actually cause drowsiness, confusion, slowing of reactions, imbalance, and lack of coordination. So some overall tips for safe medication use. Always keep a list of all prescription and over-the-counter medications with you. If you take four or more medications, talk to your doctor about possibly reducing the number of medications in order to reduce your risk of falling. Ask if a newly prescribed medication or supplement replaces Interax, etc. with anything else that you are taking. Also, take your medications as labeled, whether prescription or over-the-counter. If you're unsure how to take your medication properly, you can always ask your doctor or pharmacist. So remember to monitor your heart rate, blood pressure, and blood sugar at home. Report any side effects of your medication to your doctor. Remember that alcohol interacts with many of the medications you can take. It often makes the adverse effects of the medications worse. So avoid alcohol and uh, drug medications at the same time if you can. And then talk with your doctor and pharmacist about any concerns you may have. So what can we do to prevent a break after a fall? Some medications are directly related to bone strength. So osteopenia or osteoporosis is bad, and decreased bone loss and increased bone mineral density is good. There's medications that can work on both sides of that, and we'll go over them shortly. So some medications that can be associated with osteoporosis include corticosteroids, such as prednisone or hydrocortisone, excessive thyroid replacement, anticonvulsants, furosemide, being on a medication called heparin for more than six months, methotrexate, or cyclosporin A. Then this picture um, just indicates the very difference between a normal bone matrix and a bone that's undergoing osteoporosis. You can see that the osteoporosis bone is much more frail. So medications that decrease bone loss, if you supplement your body with calcium with vitamin D, it increases your bone density. Increased bone density can also occur when you take medications like estrogen, bisphosphonates, serums like raloxifene or Avista, calcitonin, or fluoride. So calcium and vitamin D. You want to ensure that you're taking an adequate amount of calcium. However, calcium alone is not adequate to prevent the bone loss that occurs with menopause. Males and females should be getting about 1,500 milligrams of calcium plus 400 units of vitamin D a day. And there's actually a greater benefit of calcium sublimation in women with low dietary intake. So estrogen. There's a study that says five years of hormone replacement therapy decreases the risk of vertebral fractures about 50 to 80 percent and non-vertebral fractures by about 25 percent. Uh, there's questions about how this is a dose-dependent effect. Uh, also, what happens once you stop taking the estrogen therapy and what are the risks associated with estrogen replacement therapy? Bisphosphonates. Bisphosphonates such as Fosamax, Boniva, or Actinel have a high affinity for areas of bones which are undergoing bone resorption. They inhibit the function of a cell called the osteoclast, which reduces the diminishing of your bones. These medications vary in their ability to inhibit the mineralization of new bones. So they may be used to prevent or treat steroid-induced osteoporosis. Overall results show minimal increases in bone mineral density versus loss in placebo groups. Also, small decreases in vertebral fractures. Examples of these medications include Fosamax, which is now available in a generic alendronate, Actinel, and Boniva. Some non-drug related steps you can take to prevent falls. So there's parts of your home that can definitely lead to falls and we'll go through the different things you can do to make sure your home is as safe as possible. Firstly, you want to remove rugs or use double-sided tape or non-stick backing so your rugs won't slip. Keep objects that don't need to be on the floor or stairs off the floor and stairs. And coil or tape electrical cords next to the wall to prevent tripping. In your kitchen, you want to ensure that you're moving items and cabinets to bottom shelves at waist height. If you need to reach something up high, make sure you use a sturdy stool with a bar. Never use a chair as a stool. And in your bedroom and your bathroom, if you want to place a lamp close to the bed within easy reach so you can turn it on if you need to get up at night. 
I uh, use night lights also to light dark hallways and things so you can't trip on things you're not you can't see. Also in the bathroom you want to put non-slip mats in the tub or in shower, install grab bars in the tub and next to the toilet, and install a seat in the tub or shower for washing your lower body or just maybe taking a break during the shower if it's a strenuous activity for you. There are home safety checklists available to ensure that your home is safe for you so you don't fall. This includes a lot of the things we have already talked about, but also includes things that you can change outside, such as repairing cracked sidewalks, installing handrails on your stairs and steps, trimming shrubbery along the pathway to the home, and installing adequate lighting by doorways and along walkways leading to doors. Proper footwear and attire is very important. Uh, they can reduce your risk of falls. This includes shorter pants, skirts, and bathrobes, and supportive rubber soled and low heel shoes. Thick rubber soles actually increase the risk of falling because it makes it harder to feel the ground below your feet. Exercise. Studies have shown that older women can significantly increase muscle strength and mass by combining endurance and resistance exercise training. These changes are associated with a reduced risk of falls and increased flexibility and range of motion. Okay, so just to wrap up some things, you want to make sure you exercise regularly. Strong muscles and bones help to move around with ease. Talk to your doctor and start slowly with uh, exercises programs that you start, especially if you're a beginner. Have your eyes checked yearly. Poor vision and is definitely associated with an increased risk of falling. And improve the lighting in your home. Use night lights and light bulbs with maximum wattage to safely navigate your house in low light conditions. Also, make sure you review your medications with your doctor and pharmacist to make sure that they are the best option for you. Remove any hazards from your home, use caution on slippery or uneven surfaces, and most importantly, don't rush. Take your time, especially when getting out of bed or standing up if you have been lying down or sitting for an extended period of time. It's also very important to wear proper clothing and footwear. Thank you very much.